Bioactive enclosures are the way of the future. And one of the staples in a bioactive enclosure are plants. And today we're gonna tell you about the top five best terrarium plants for your bioactive build. My name's Adam, this is not diamond, it's a philodendron. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Coming in at number five, let's just start off right here with philodendron. Now philodendron, or it could be monstera, it doesn't really matter, they're very similar. Both of them put off air roots. Both of them can come in either broad leaves or small leaves, and they fill out an enclosure really, really well. So you can have them either coming down from a background, they can be planted on the ground as well, and sprouting up that way. A lot of them are stiff enough, if you look at this stem here, that uh, they're gonna be able to hold the weight of whatever it is that you have. If you have an anole, if you have a tree frog, if you have a dart frog, or maybe something even bigger, they're going to be able to support themselves in these leaves, and it's gonna provide a lot of ground cover as well. That is the best part about philodendron species and monstera, is that they offer that type of shaded area, and it is a platform for them to stand on as well especially in a more moist, tropical type environment, a humid type environment, where things like foot rot or uh, anything on the ground scale rot might be a factor in your animals. Well, this is going to solve that problem and offer shade at the same time. And also, philodendron and monstera, it just grows like crazy. You can split it. If you have one, wait a couple months, split it, you'll have another one, and you're gonna be able to keep propagating your own without spending money over and over again. Philodendron is a perfect plant for most terrariums. Coming in at number four, bromeliads. There's a few different kinds of bromeliads. Guzmani are my favorite because they've got these beautiful blooms. Once they bloom though, it's gonna be about another two years until they bloom again, but they're gonna have these pups offshooting. This one here is one of the larger ones. We're actually in Costa Rica right now. This is one that's native to Costa Rica, but you can find these in garden centers all over the US, Canada, the EU, anywhere that you are, you'll likely be able to find one no matter the time of year. You'll find them in bloom, this one's not, but even if they're not in bloom, they're perfect to put in your terrariums. And as you see here, it's not potted. It's not in soil, it's not on the ground. You're gonna stick these kind of in your background. If you have a foam background, something like that, you'll stick them in there. They're going to bloom or grow from branches or perches or wherever you wanna put it, but generally not on the ground. Something like a frog, if you had a tree frog or a dart frog, they really like hanging out in these. You'll see here my Dendrobates erratus. They've got several in their enclosure and it's their favorite spot to chill because you'd have to put a quite a bit of pressure on this for it to collapse. So smaller animals are gonna use it almost like a tree perch with just a little bit of give, a little bit of flexibility. They like it really hot, they like it really humid, which is how they can actually sustain themselves when they're not rooted in a soil. You're gonna have moss around the base, something like that, but either way, bromeliads are not only the most beautiful, in my opinion, or one of, but they're one of the best options and one of the easiest options to care for. Nice. Nice. Coming in at number three, orchids. We're talking about terrarium orchids, not the Philanopsis orchids that you'd find in your grandma's living room or anything like that. These here, I am not an expert on, but my friend Mike Tatula is, and we're gonna ask Mike all about these type of orchids. Mike, what type of orchids or what family do you think this is in and what would these be good for? So these guys, I believe, are an epidendrum. Really, we're just talking about terrarium orchids, though. There are thousands of species of them that are great for dart frog tanks and tropical tanks in general. Where you're gonna be placing them is up like bromeliads. They're an epiphyte, so they like to grow off the ground and on top of logs and a little bit of moss, just as you see right here. And while we're talking about Costa Rican species, I wanna to talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. And that's because I wish I took the Spanish class before I came here. Something I will definitely do when we get home. If you are looking for a creative platform, something that is made for creatives by creators, Skillshare is the right platform for you. So whether you're a weekend warrior or you're a professional or somewhere in between, there is a class for you no matter what the discipline, no matter what the skill it is you're trying to learn or get better at, Skillshare can truly teach you something. Skillshare is gonna be an invaluable tool to your hobby or your career. And right now, the first thousand subscribers of Wiccans Wicked Reptiles get one month free if you use the link below in the description or the pinned comment. And after that, it's a fabulous price for what you get 
It's actually kind of an insane deal to me. Thank you very much, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to talking about plants. Coming in at number two, snake plant. No longer in the Sensevaria family, but it's still called mother-in-law's tongue sometimes, hilariously enough. This is a plant that can be in a tropical environment or a drier environment, which makes it very unique. This is a cool plant that's not gonna provide too much cover, but let's suppose you put this in, say, a crested gecko enclosure. Inside, you're gonna be able to have that crested gecko kind of take shelter. These animals that are gonna be arboreal or semi-arboreal, especially animals that have sort of a sticky type toe that allows them to climb surfaces. So they're gonna be able to go upside down or up. They're gonna climb these things. And because they're pretty darn sturdy, they're not going to be falling over unless you've got a really big gecko. So maybe not for your lychee, but definitely for your cresty. Another thing too, these will be on the ground, but they grow very tall as you can see. I'm sitting down on a step, this is on the ground, and still it is taller than me. So about the size of a small child, I would say. These things will go small or they will get big. It's really up to you and you can split them as well. Snake plants are a perfect opportunity to have something in your terrarium that is almost bulletproof. You're not gonna be able to kill them no matter what you do unless you have it sitting in a pot of water or don't water it for 40 years. Like these things, what I'm trying to say here, are basically indestructible and a perfect opportunity to have something in your terrarium that looks beautiful too. And coming in at number one, my favorite terrarium plant, Pothos. One of the reasons, first of all, is it's really, really easy. It's going to vine everywhere. This thing grows like a freaking weed and you're gonna have the opportunity to propagate it many times. Buy one, have Pothos forever. And you're not gonna be able to kill it either. It's going to vine so you can have it at the top of an enclosure, going down, you could plant it on the ground, very similar to a philodendron, and it's gonna provide a lot of cover for your animals. And it doesn't matter, it could be a terrestrial animal, it could be an arboreal animal, or somewhere in between, it's gonna give it that opportunity and it's gonna fill out your terrarium quite a bit. So if you need something that is not only cheap, but is going to grow easily and fast, there's really nothing that can beat a pothos. This is something that you're gonna see in every grandmother's living room, hanging from the ceiling in a pot or something like that, and they last forever. I've had a pothos in my mother's kitchen for 25 years, the exact same one. You just keep cutting it and you can keep planting it. They're a really great species for a humid enclosure. They can last in a little bit of a drier enclosure as well. But overall, if you're looking for something easy, something that's gonna provide cover, and something that looks really nice and doesn't spoil very easily, there's really nothing that beats a pothos. So there you go. Those are your top five terrarium plants. Whether you have a human enclosure, an arid enclosure, or something in between, I hope you found something super useful in this video. Let me know in the comment section below, what is your favorite terrarium plant? Do you think some of this on the list could have been changed up for something else? And of course, as always, in the comments below, what do you wanna see next week? That's where I get all the ideas. Please hit like, subscribe. It really helps this channel more than you can imagine and takes nothing but a couple clicks of your mouth. I really appreciate that. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys got special early access to the entire Costa Rica trip, which is coming out next week. You guys get discounts on the merch, bonus videos. You guys get a whole bunch more for as little as $1 a month. You can be part of the Patreon club too. And I think that's it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.